Hello, thanks for purchasing one of our You Repair Do-It-Yourself kits. We prepared this video to help you go through the process of repairing your iPhone in an easy and safe way. All you have to do is follow the step-by-step -step instructions. So let's start by showing you how to open your device. Hey, what's up guys? Today I will be showing you how to work on an iPhone 5C. First thing and foremost, you want to make sure that your workstation is properly organized and that we have the tools for the job. For the tools today, I will be using the tools provided inside your kit, as well as the box that your kit comes in. We will be using this to basically keep track of all of our screws to make sure that we don't lose them. All right, up here, we have our replacement screen, a replacement battery. We have some double-sided adhesive that we acquired to re-adhere the battery onto the device itself. And finally, we have this decal. This decal will be we will be installing it onto the display in order to help us avoid any kind of injury and to help the suction cup actually grip better onto the device. Okay, so let's go ahead and set up our tools. All right, starting up here, we have a suction cup, a little cleaning cloth, plastic spudger, then comes our set of screwdrivers all of our tweezers a little wedger and then we have some alcohol wipes a guitar pick and our sim card eject pin all right, so let's go ahead and install the decal. The first step to your repair. Remove the paper backing. Now we will align this as best as possible. Now using our spudger, we're just gonna basically guide it along the top of the display to make sure that we have a bubble free bond. All right. Next step, we will be removing both of the pencil loop screws located on the bottom beside the lining port, and we will be using our pencil loop screwdriver. This one is the one that looks like a five pointed star, pretty much. Now, I'm gonna be using my finger as leverage. I'm gonna go ahead and kind of cover the screws and just push my finger away with the screwdriver. This will help me avoid scratching the device. and would also help me guide the screwdriver into the correct position. All right, so for the screws itself, we're gonna be placing them in the box and we're gonna be basically grouping them inside of the box so we make sure to know exactly where they belong. All right, here we go, second screw. Now we're gonna go ahead and move on to opening the device. All right, we will be using the suction cup we're going to place it right above the home button. All right. And we're going to use our little wedge tool here to insert it right there above that headphone jack. So we're going to firmly pull on the suction cup to create a small gap. So basically just place your wedge tool here as you pull on the suction cup in order to insert it as soon as you create that gap. Might take a few tries guys, but you know, you'll eventually get it. So once you create this gap, you can let go of the, of the suction cup with your thumb, basically hold it open and move up, move on to the opposite side and pry it open. Once you have your device open, you're gonna lift your screen to a 90 degree angle to reveal your EMI shield. We will be working on removing the shield by removing all the four screws that you see here. The one on the top right is not very magnetic. So if you have some issues lifting it up with your screwdriver, go ahead and use your tweezers to remove it from the device. Let's go ahead and start removing the screws. I'm gonna be placing these on my table just to show you exactly how I create groups inside of the box, but then I will be moving the screws into the box so I don't lose them. 
So I'm basically removing them and placing them in the table in the same pattern that I removed them. And this pattern is basically the same thing that I will be recreating inside of the box. Okay, onto the last screw, placing this on the table. And I'm going to go ahead and lift up the shield. And this is exactly what I do inside of the box. I will put this shield inside the box with the screws right next to the screw hole that they belong in, just to ensure that I don't mix up or lose any of them and to basically remind myself exactly where they belong when I'm going to reassemble the device. So let's go ahead and move this into the box. Okay, so I will be using the first box basically to place the screws that go inside of the device. And I'll most likely use the, the lid for it to place screws that belong to the screen assembly. Alright, so next step is to disconnect the flexes for the screen. You have three flexes, beginning with the front facing camera. We're going to go ahead and disconnect this one using just the corner of the flat side of your spudger. Inserting it right beneath the flex and gently prying it up. Like so. Holding it so it, to move it out of the way. We're going to move on to the LCD cable. Again, same thing. Just insert it right beneath the cable. Don't go, don't be too rough with this. You don't want to damage the socket lying underneath the cable itself. All right. And finally, we have the digitizer. The digitizer just come, you know, basically from the left side using the, at the corner of the flat side and pry it up like that. Now you can set down your device. And we have successfully opened the iPhone 5C. Okay, guys. So now that we have the device open, we will move on to removing the battery from the iPhone 5C. Let's go ahead and move our display out of the way since we're not, we will not be working on this right now. All right, so in order to gain access to the battery, basically we have to remove this shield that you see here by removing both of the Phillips head screws using our Phillips head screwdriver. So let's go ahead and remove both of them. Again, group them inside of your box to ensure that you don't lose them like so. Placing them inside of your box in the same manner. You always want to remind yourself exactly where the screws belong because if you were to mix up any of the screws, you risk highly damaging your device. Now, we're going to move on to disconnecting the, the bottom cable that you see here that we just revealed. This one is the cable for your battery. In order to disconnect this one, we will be using the tip of our spudger. And we're going to insert it in this little gap that you see in between this standoff screw and the connector itself. So basically just insert it in there and pry the cable up gently. Once you see the cable come loose, you would fold it inward towards the inside of the battery. Now the next step involves us unfolding a little piece of black tape, I guess you could call it, um, lying in between the battery and the lining port. So near the headphone jack, you're gonna see the beginning of the tape, which is right here. We're gonna basically pull this upwards and begin unfolding it like so. All right, so for this step, we'll be using some scissors to cut this in half. Reason why, I'm gonna show you right now. Once you actually unfold this little tab, you're gonna go ahead and pull it up to reveal two pieces of adhesive, as you see right here, and we're gonna cut it right in the middle so we could have each strip of adhesive individually. So let's go ahead and Pull this upwards and cut this right down the middle. All right. Now we have the strips individually. 
we're going to be gently pulling on this they do tend to break so be very very careful we're going to go ahead and pull them and guide them towards the sides of the batteries in between the gap of the battery and the frame assembly and the battery and the motherboard so let's go ahead and start pulling on this If the tape itself was to break, you will basically be prying the battery out of the device. And the only possible way that you could do it with the tools that you have received will be using the handle of the tweezers, which is the only metallic tool. Any other tool that is made out of plastic will basically break in the process. So if you feel like your tape is breaking, just grab it closer to the battery to avoid this from happening. And make sure that you're not putting any pressure on the side of tape that you're working on. All right, so here we go. He's a strip removed. Now let's move on to the opposite side. Be gentle and make sure that you don't literally press or drag the strip against any components in inside the device as this will cause fur to tear. So keep it as flat as possible. So we have removed both of the strips from the battery, underneath the battery. And we'll go ahead and lift up the battery from its position. Okay, so here's our battery. My, my uh, left strip actually did break in the end, but it's not enough to actually hold your battery in place. Let's go ahead and place our battery aside. Remove this piece of strip that is remaining inside of the device. Basically, just to clean it all off. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and use the alcohol wipe that we received in the kit and make sure that this is clean from any adhesive. Okay. Now you did receive two wipes. One of them is the wet alcohol wipe and then you have a dry one. All right, let's we'll go ahead and move on to reinstalling our double-sided adhesive. We're gonna go ahead and remove this from the paper backing. and directly place it inside of the device. reason for the adhesive is basically so your battery doesn't rattle inside of the device as the gap 
for the battery is actually a little bit bigger than the battery itself. So to reinstall the, the new battery, the first thing that we're going to do is create the proper band for the flex itself. And the proper way to do this is basically plugging it in first. But before that, let's go ahead and remove the paper backing for the adhesive. So we could have that out the way once we have the battery plugged in. Now using the tip of my spudger, I'm going to go ahead and do this. Okay. Now let's move on to plugging it in. To find the, the socket itself, just place it, align it as best as possible, and with your finger, feel for the connector to actually drop in place before you press on it. You don't want to damage the socket by pressing when it's not properly aligned. And then you're gonna feel for that click. Now, we're gonna go ahead and lower the battery, and then push, basically push on the flex itself while holding it down to ensure that it doesn't get disconnected, and we're basically folding the flex as we push on it. And then just drop the battery into position, like so. Now, ensure that the connector is still plugged in. Now we're gonna move on to replacing or reinstalling the shield that protects the connectors. Grab this from your box. And follow that map that you made for yourself in order to keep track of your screws. All right, when you're screwing, basically or reinstalling the screws on inside of the device, when you're tightening them, you, you wanna make sure not to over tighten them. So when you feel that your screwdriver stops, this is basically telling you to stop. And let's go ahead and move onto the second screw and final screw for the battery replacement. There we go, screwdriver stops, I stop. Well guys, as you have seen, we have successfully reinstalled or replace the battery on an iPhone 5C. Well, your repair is almost done. All you need to do now is reassemble your phone. So, did you think the repair was too easy for you? Maybe you have a natural talent for that. How about making some money with this? Yes, you can do just like me and join the iExperts, a community of repair specialists. Want to know how? Visit www.becomeaniexpert.com and be welcome to your new future. Now, let's see the last part of this video. Okay guys, so basically now that we have uh, swapped out the parts that we're gonna work on this iPhone 5C with, we're gonna go ahead and close this up reassemble the device. Now the first step in doing so is get your display, bring it up to a 90 degree angle, and so you're gonna separate the flexes, so basically just gently bend them upwards, and then you're gonna see that the first one on the bottom is small, thin, and straight. This one is your digitizer. So in order to connect this one, you're gonna basically align it as best as possible with the socket underneath, and then we're going to with our finger, feel for it for, for it to stop moving. You're gonna, you're not gonna place it and press down because basically it's not gonna be free to move. So you're just gonna move it around while it's freely floating on top of the socket until you feel that it stops moving. When you feel so, you're gonna gently press down and you will feel a light click. Now, make sure that you don't pull up as it will come loose. Next step is basically, okay, let's do this again. All right, there we go. Now, the next step is to connect the LCD cable. This one, basically after you connect the first one, the second one will pretty much be aligned. So again, do the same thing though. Just feel for the socket, feel for when the flex drops in position and then gently press down on it. You don't want to be pressing and pressing and pressing on this as you could damage the flex and the socket. So basically when you feel that it's properly plugged in, you move on to the next one. Now finally we have the, this one here, it's actually the front facing camera. This one is a little bit more difficult as it's not rigid like the other two. So I'm gonna use my thumb for this one and I'm gonna basically do the same thing I did with the other two. Move it around until I feel it drop in position. And then I press it down. 
we're always going to feel for that click. Now that we have plugged in all of the flexes, we're going to go ahead and reinstall the shield that protects these. Just drop it on top, and then you're going to have at least one of the two bottom screws aligned with the screw hole. Let's go ahead and reinstall the screws. I tend to pinch the screws in between my fingers like so, and just leaving the head of the screw exposed to properly align it onto the tip of the screwdriver in order to easily reinstall this as I'm using my hand here to hold the display up. So again, do it again, same way. Again, make sure that you don't over tighten the screws as you could damage the screws, strip the head of them, and then it'll be extremely difficult if you have a feature repair. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the screws. Now you have three different types of screws on this plate. The one I'm installing now is the top right. This one is the longest one of all. You will most likely not mistaken this one for the other ones, but in case this one goes on the top right. Now the two in the bottom are actually the same exact size. This ones you can move them side to side, but they won't go up. Now the ones on the bottom are the smallest ones. That's how you know which ones goes on the bottom. The one on top is on the top right is the longest one. That's the one for the top right. And the one left over, it goes on the top left. Now, another way to tell which one goes on top is the one on the right is not very magnetic. So basically that's how you could tell these apart. Now that we have reinstalled the shield here, we're going to go ahead and lower our display into position. On the top of our display, we actually have some little clips. Um, let's see if you can see them, but they are actually, you have one here and one there and then we have the ones on the corners you don't want to press down on the display as you're going to damage those so the proper way to install this is in an angle you're going to lower the screen into the frame assembly making sure that the top of the display is actually flush without pressing on it and then we're going to lower the display into the frame using my thumb here i'm going to keep the pressure on the top to ensure that this doesn't come loose as we're working on the rest of the display and then with my thumb, I'm going to basically guide the sides into the clips of the device, making sure that everything is properly flush. Final step is to reinstall both of the pentalope screws on the bottom. I just drop both of them in position and I will place my finger on top of them to make sure that the magnetism from the screwdriver doesn't pull them out of the location. Then using the screwdriver, I'll push my finger out of the way and screw the screw in same way for the other one when you feel the screwdriver stops turning that's it guys all right so basically we have successfully reinstalled the screen onto our display here we're going to go ahead and boot it all right we have that apple logo now make sure that everything works properly on your device the touch, you're going to pick up and drag one of your applications and move it around, making sure that it follows your finger every step of the way and that you don't have any lines on your display. If everything is working properly, you have basically successfully repaired your iPhone 5C. Well, that's it for this video, guys. Thank you.